If you're hospitalized with your stroke, um, the commonest impairment is a, a motor impairment. So weakness, um, usually down one side, the right side or the left side, usually affecting the arm and the leg. Uh, the legs usually do better than the arms. Um, but then the second commonest um, impairment is, is to do with speech and language. Um, and vision uh, usually happens when there's either been a large stroke of the middle cerebral artery or a posterior cerebral artery um, stroke will often cause a, a problem with vision. Uh, and the way that the visual system is set up, one half of the visual cortex looks after one side of the world and the other half looks after the other. So patients often have what's called a hemianopia, which means they're missing vision from, from one side of the world or the other. And that probably happens in about 10% of, of strokes. But a lot of those patients don't actually make it into hospital because when they lose their vision, um, they don't realise they've they've had a stroke. Um, um, so they often don't follow the classical stroke pathway. But I, I run a specialist clinic for, for patients like that and see a lot of, a lot of them who have that story. Um, so in other words, relatively common. Um, and um, again, there are a lot of practice-based therapies that you can do to improve whether you've got a language problem, so an aphasia, or whether you've got a, a problem that affects your vision. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've developed with a lot of other people um, over many years, developed um, various apps that, that people can use um, in their own time. Um, because with a lot of these behavioral therapies, the once you've got something that works, um, that's obviously step one. But then the thing you really need is a lot of practice time and um, on the NHS and indeed throughout lots of different healthcare systems. It's not just the NHS. Patients um, just don't get enough um, access to therapists and therefore access to practice. So the whole point of trying to tie these therapies up into apps is not to replace a therapist um, who will be much more holistic, you know, would, would work on many things um, uh, at one time. These are what I would call narrow. So they just work on one specific area of impairment, in this case, either language or vision. Um, and even within language, they will only work on one particular aspect. So we've done a, an app that improves um, patient's ability to read, but it doesn't affect their ability to understand speech or their ability to talk, for example. And indeed, even within the domain of reading, they only get better on the words that we've been, um, that they've been training on. And this is no great surprise in a way when you think of how we learn in general. You, you actually, a lot of the learning we do is specific. Um, you may pick up general rules when you learn something, but um, we know from human expert performance, for instance, um, professional athletes, that you really have to practice each individual aspect of whatever they do in order to get better on that aspect. And it's the same um, in non-athletes and it's the same in rehabilitation largely. So what that means is um, mass practice with feedback. Um, you do have to have the feedback because if you've had a brain injury and you're making mistakes, say when you're trying to name a picture, it's very important you get feedback as to whether you've named it correctly or not, because a lot of people who've had a stroke and have language problems um, are not great at what's called self-monitoring. So they don't realize they've made an error. So that's the tricky bit. And once you've solve that problem, um, then it's really just a question of getting the algorithms more efficient, which is what we're trying to do. Um, and I guess give patients a chance to practice when and where suits them. And not everybody can bash away at these apps for hours on end. In fact, it's probably not a good idea. It's probably better to do little and often. And again, you can't really do that with a therapist. You can't book a therapist just for 20 minutes uh, a day. It doesn't really uh, work like that. Most patients, certainly on the NHS, will get there speech and language therapy, they'll get a bit as an inpatient and then they'll get maybe six or eight sessions as an outpatient. And then generally they'll be discharged. Um, and, and that just isn't a big enough dose. So that's another reason that we've developed these apps.